everybody. Welcome back to Musings by Nikki. I have got, um, well, I've got book covers, lots of them, in lots of different stages of being and doneness. Um, so, you know, there's a long story behind everything, but <laughs> I thought this was going to be a part like one, two, and then maybe three to get through the book cover, the bark, the faux bark one, but, um, this is going to be like a part one a because I had requests um, and people messaged me that they really wanted to see the how to make the knot on the front and put some texture um, extra texture in so and it was mostly it's you know let's be honest it was Terry was the first one hi Terry um, and what T wants T gets because she's my buddy so she wants to see a knot and she said I'm a visual learner so Terry and everybody else that asked for it, <laughs> this is for you. So let's take a little reminder, but you can see I've done some work. Da, 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 da. Here is the cover, but I have put some extra, I've done some work to the spine now. So I have covered this guy in a layer of Mod Podge because, um, you know, when you just put on the, when you put on the acrylic, I just think like over time finger oils and stuff are just no good. Whoever gets this, I want them to like use it and look at it and write in it and do stuff. So, um, so I covered this whole thing in a layer of Mod Podge and seriously guys, when I did that, it really just next leveled it. It was really cool. Um, and then I attached, oh, I did a whole bunch of layering of like paper and, um, burlap or hessian I think they call it in the UK and then some cheesecloth and I sewed back and forth a whole bunch of times and then I got super fingers full of gluey when I made the um, spine and then this is real leather that I so yeah this is a this is a messy process but um, anyway this is what we're this is what we're going for that's what we're that's the direction we're headed um Last video, we made this, which, look, it's black now. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a whole long story. Anyway, it's black. I painted it. I thought, yeah, I was going to record that part. But it's okay, because we're going to have new ones to paint or to make. And you're going to, then I won't have to, like, wait for drying time and all that sort of stuff, because we can just work on this one. So, um this is what it, it turned out like, dried like, and this is what it obviously looks like, covered in black. Then, here's the little guy that we made um, out of the masking paper. And see how it's kind of flat? Like, it's, I mean, it, it's got a little texture, but it's kind of flat. So, pluses to the masking paper, it's already brown. So, I mean, you could, you, I could definitely use it to make the, like, the faux leather covers and stuff. Um, drawbacks is that it just didn't get as much texture as the paper towel. The paper towel really has a lot more texture to it. Um, and so what I did was went, I had some really old texture paste, but this is a white sand version. This one has sand like granules in it, um, which is really just like silica. So I went back in, and now it looks really goofy, but I'm telling you, once you get painting on it, you won't see any of that. But I went back in and just did a little knot, so I gave it some texture, and I then I made some ridges. Here's ridges, and I made some ridges over here. So once we paint, paint that, um, we'll see how that looks. I stopped. I didn't paint that one. So I'll, we'll wash that one in black and paint it. Then... Because I had leftover of it, I just had this little tiny baby journal cover, and I went and made um, just using, so this one is just only the texture paste, and I made some lines. I just used my spatula, um, and I carved some little lines in as I went. I mean, you can see, right? Nothing super fancy, but here's what it looks like. Black. It's going to actually look really cool when um, we paint this. So we'll paint that one too. So we're going to set aside all these ones that we're going to paint later in the next video. Not today. 
Let me move them over there. Okay. So then I have two more journal covers. This one's a massive guy. Look at that. Super humongous. This one is um, repurposed. These two are repurposed kids atlas papers or pages, book covers. That's the word I was looking for. And that's just chipboard and it's going to be a, a, a big trifold guy. But um, we'll cover the front of this. I want to see what how it is to try and wrap because I want this whole cover, this whole front cover to be, um, look at this is my pointing device now. <laughs> I'm only using it as a, I want this whole cover <laughs> to, let me put this down before I hurt myself. I want this whole cover front and back to be wood. So I'm going to see how that goes around like wrapping around the edges and trying to make it all go together. Then this is just a standard book cover that I made, uh, repurposing some, I don't know, some book cover that somebody gave me a book a long time ago and I repurposed it. So, um, oh, and then I, d I did bring out and I just wanted to mention this. So this is just my, whoops, regular texture paste. Um, this one doesn't have the sand in it, but I'm guessing you could use this the same as the sand. The silica in the sand one really made a cool little, um, made a cool little texture though. Also, I learned from my last experience and I got a much larger bin. This is probably too large, but it's okay. We won't fill that sucker up all the way. Got my Elmer's glue. So let's create a solution. We're going to pour some glue in here. Thanks to uh, whoever it was making fun of my description on the consistency of the glue. <laughs> Saying that it's the consistency of watered down glue. Okay, I'm just pouring some water out, out my Nalgene um, into the, the bin. And I'm just going to use my palette knife to mix this up. Remember, we're watering this down because you don't need to use full strength glue. Someone asked about using paper mache, um, like the flour and water thing. I don't know if that would, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think certainly it probably could work. I don't know about, you know, I'm just all about like standing the test of time. And I know that glue will help stuff stand the test of time. Like that, I know. Glue, especially when we mix it up like this and, you know, slather it all over this thing. Because it, it really, that other one, my example one, is really quite, um, quite strong. I'm going to put some more in here. Like... And it's not super heavy. It does add a little bit of weight. So, you know, when I, when I go to, uh, sell that, if someone in, you know, cross seas buys it, it's, it might be a little spendy to ship. Nah, I don't know. I don't think it's that, I'm just rambling as I mix glue. I don't think it's that much heavier though. Now that I think about it, honestly, um, maybe a little more water. Should I have done this off camera? No, of course not. You want to hear my funny story of the day, guys, though, while we mix glue? Um, I can't find my glasses. Honest, honest to God, I have no idea. I have three pair, two older prescription and one newer one. I'm wearing the newer one. I have been wearing the older ones. Don't ask me why. <laughs> but I... It, like it's I was going mad this morning I could not find it could not find my pair of glasses so all right that looks good now we have ginormo bin of glue and 
we're gonna tear off some paper towels because you know once you get your hands dirty in this mess um there is no you know you do you don't you don't want to try and grab the roll of paper towels and rip more paper towel because that would be a hot mess your hands would stick to the roll of paper towels your hands would stick to the paper towels the paper towels would stick to everything that you touched afterwards that's a good solid amount of paper towels okay so let's do this I have not prepped this in any way other than it is just the book cover and my uh, book repair tape for making the cover. And in we go. Okay. So I just dip it in, in case you didn't watch the original version of this, I dip it into the glue, I then try to make sure that it's saturated, and then I, um, you know, like open up the, oh my gosh, then I try to make it saturated, then I try to wring it out, and now I'm trying to open it back up so that we can apply it. All right, and then I'm going to do this one first. So I just try to make it go right up to the edge, but it doesn't need to go over. And then we're just going to try and make some wrinklies. I should have moved this out of the way. So, of course, there goes my phone dinging because I totally forgot to put that on silent. Sorry, guys. You hear my phone ding. Um, okay. So, again, trying to make sure that there are no bubbles in here. And smooth it out. And then we wrap it around. I think after having used the masking paper, um, there are some applications that I think that that masking paper would work really well for. Just for the actual like making tree bark thing, I think I prefer the paper towel just because it gives you more texture and then you you probably won't be able to see this on camera at all but um, there you know in your paper towels all paper towel brands are different these are just we use the Kirkland ones from Costco um, which is what what these are uh, but some are you know have little designs in them these have just a little design in them, which doesn't matter because the minute you start crinkling it all up, you don't see the design. Um, but I know, I know from my cake decorating days that Viva uh, doesn't have a design. They have flat paper towels. There we go. Um, and so you could use that if you were concerned about the design. But honestly, look at this. The minute I soak it up with glue, you can't even see the design anymore. But you can see this like... Oh, I don't know how to describe it, but there's like a kind of a porous texture, but honestly, it, it helps. At first I was worried that you're going to be able to just go, oh, that just looks like paper towels on a book or, you know, wet toilet paper at this point on a book. But, um, honestly, once it dried up and I started painting it, the little tiny, like, uh, you know, things, the little... I don't know how to describe them, but whatever. It's like, I'm sure they're like the moisture picker upper pockets. Um, they actually 
create like a really cool texture and they pick up the paint in these little crevices and stuff. It's really awesome. So it works. All right, same process that we did before, right? Just smoothing, smoothing over, smoothing, kind of trying to sort of miter the corner a little, but just make sure that there's not a super gob of stuff there because otherwise, you know, trying to cover it later on is going to be hard. And then trying to make sure that there's a little bit of interest here because um, when I was cutting the end papers, which I haven't put in yet, but for my other cover, um, Oh, come on. It's like doubled over in itself. When I was cutting the end papers, I lo was looking at the edges and decided I wanted to leave some of the edge around the perimeter here. So, um, because it looks cool. Uh, and it's just like continuity from the front to the back of the book. So I'm going to make sure that along the edge, oh, there's an air bubble. That along the edge, there's also a little bit of detail here. Okay, so for the sake of time, so we don't have another, you know, hour long video, um, I'm just going to show you on this one piece then, and I'll, you know, I'll go ahead and do the rest of it later on, but I'm going to show you on this front cover how I made the knot. So just another sheet of um, paper towel into the snot mixture. That's kind of what this stuff reminds me of today. And I didn't, I just went with the same, okay, so now we got to open it back up again. So I went and looked at some trees and because now I've just been like studying the trees in my yard and all of their little injuries and their knot holes and all that stuff where branches have been cut off and some you know you it's interesting when you start <laughs> looking at a tree super up close um all the little places where the gnarls are you know where the burrs and the and the um, knots are and stuff are all very different so here's what I'm going to do. I've got this straightened out and it's, it's kind of hard to show you this because I do it up and down, but what I'm going to do is kind of like ruche it together. I'm going to kind of gather it here. Like that. And then I'm going to choose where I want my knot hole. So I'm going to go little lower on this one and I'm going to make the bottom half of it and then bring this up to the top and then I'm going to kind of spread this a little bit apart as it gets up here to just create more texture now this part here this is like total artistic freedom you do however however you want to do this part it's totally up to you um like i said look at some look at some trees uh i didn't like how that was ruched so i'm gonna kind of work it again and then at the end here because we're gonna put more on top of it um i'm just pushing it down into the so here are my thoughts on this part right now. When I've looked at the knot holes, they kind of don't go flush out to the tree. They kind of go in a little bit, right? So I'm, I'm wanting to have it be a little more flushed here, but then as we get to the part where there's the knot, I kind of want it to go in a little bit like this. Because if you go and actually look at a tree um, you will see that right where the injury is, there's almost this like little lip kind of around the edge of it. And that is what I'm trying to recreate here. Uh, and also 
the key to remember here is that this is the front of a journal, if that's how you're using this. So you don't want this to get too bulky because when you open the book, you want it to be able to rest on the um, table, you know, and have your pages open and close. Ultimately, this is about, you know, a journal. So it should be functional. It should be beautiful as well as functional, which is the wonderful, probably the thing that I love the most about junk journals is that it is art that you can use on a daily basis. Like, but not just, not just, it's collaborative art. I think there, that's a good, that's a good way to put it. Um, because I make this book and I, you know, pour my soul and creativity into it. And then somebody else, most of the time who I just don't even really know, gets the book and then they collaborate with me as they write down their life stories and their, you know, quotes that they love and things that happen in their lives and tuck pictures and tickets and whatever they do. Um, they collaborate with me and I will never know most of the time what they've done with it. But just the thought that there are people using my art to add their, their self and personality into is just, that really is super cool for me. So there we go. That's my little story and I'm sticking to it. So here's what I'm going to try and do here. Here's the tricky part is this has definitely a flat edge. I wonder, I wonder if we try to give it a little bit of a tear just to help it um, not be such a straight edge. Probably will work better. Yeah, because the problem is, you know, trees don't, tree bark doesn't have like a straight, doesn't have straight edges on it. So now we're making the other half of the knot. Look at that. It just disguised right in there. You can't even see where the edge is. Um, so now I'm going to complete the, now you could do one of two things. You could make this into a round knot like this, right? And smooth it out and rip that edge and make it round kind of a knot hole like that. I kind of like the teardrop shaped thing. Um, it reminds me of like, you know, where a squirrel would have its little house or something like that. So I am, that's what I'm going for. Now, the other trick is to remember this is bark. So it has some, some amount of linearness. Is that a word? Linearness? to it, like a, a definitely like up and down striation, vertical striation. That sounds way more intelligent than linearness. Um, so I kind of want, on the inside here, I want this to have a little bit of a lip too. So again, you guys just play with it as much as you need to, to get to where you're satisfied with how it looks. Um, just remember that as it starts to, as the glue starts to kind of dry up on your hands, as you keep touching this and the layer underneath starts to get a little more tacky, it's going to be harder the more, if you pull it up and down a whole lot of times, then you do risk the, the chance of like tearing it. Um, and you don't want to do that. I'm going to tear this edge again up here. Ugh, like that. So it'll blend a little better. Because now I've got this, I've got this layer, this layer, and this layer all going around the edge. And I don't need some humongous gob of, you know, on this side smooth that down the best I can. And then I'm just going with my fingernails here. You just want to make sure you don't get too much side to side in it because, um, you know, that's not how a tree bark would look. I don't know. Some tree bark's really interesting. So we had taught some, you know, I was reading all your comments 
it's fun to read your comments you guys I love reading your comments um someone was asking about like birch or saying that they wanted to do a birch bark tree uh cover journal cover which would be awesome I've seen where like you know people have like actually taken birch bark and there's this whole process they go through to dry it and size it and do all this stuff because you know of course it's like coming off a live tree um okay so i think i'm okay with how this part is now this little part that i ripped off down here i'm just going to give a little extra detail along this edge because it's kind of got a little flat right here see that bold spot so i'm going to use this part that i ripped off and give it a little extra zhuzh let's see and you can really build this up just know that you know like the knot part now this is going to take a couple days to dry um depending on you know how warm or humid your climate is this is going to take a few days to dry just because it's so saturated right now um, and it's thick you know like it's mushy and thick so mine took i i want to say mine took maybe like 48 hours till it was all the way um like dry to where i couldn't push it down anymore and feel any movement or give all right, I'm just gonna tuck this last. So I'm gonna tuck. I'm just kind of tucking it up underneath my little lip of my um, knot here, and then just giving it some, moving it around, giving it some texture, giving it a little move. There we go. So this is the part where you look like you just have a big gob of toilet paper on your book. So see how that's kind of got a lip? You can see the shadow, right? That there's a lip underneath there, and then there's kind of a lip underneath the top of the teardrop there, and along the sides, there's kind of a lip too. But then up, up towards the top, it just blends in. So kind of just imagine how that's going to look when, um, when it dries and we start painting it. It really is going to pick up that texture really well. So... Uh, that's how I made the knot. Um, I think that's probably it. That's all I really wanted to show you today. I'm going to let this one dry um, and then I will be back and we will start painting them. And then if you guys want to, well, I don't know. We'll see about like the doing the spine work. That's kind of hard to show, but I will definitely do my darndest if you really, really want to see it. So until next time guys um here that there you go terry i hope you're happy babe love ya <laughs> and uh i will see you guys uh very soon with the rest of this have a good morning afternoon evening wherever you are on this wonderful planet of ours god bless Bye bye